Yeah, yeah, I started in 1990. Things are... Oh, yeah. turtles, eh? Yeah. Oh, yeah, what do you have to say for yourself? Prices will be excellent. Hi, Mati. Welcome. Welcome to our car. Welcome to the car. But today, we're driving up to Holland. We're gonna visit a couple shops, and we're gonna finally do some toy hunting over at our northern neighbors. I wanna go in and be, like, surprised to see stuff. Amsterdam, <laughs> my kind of town. First thing I see is uh, the, the most Amsterdam thing you can uh, you can imagine. It's like a, a white van with a, a kind of a, a Frankenstein skeleton in in front. My kind of car. So we're checking out some shops in the center, but we made plans to visit one of the oldest vintage toy stores in the country. Let's head to Space Oddity. We walk in, we meet the owner Jeff, and we just have too much stuff to look at, honestly. Oh yeah, pretty cool, uh, old school vibe. It's digging time, boys. <laughs> Ed and, and Matthew were just uh, talking to the owner, and so I, I thought I have to uh, take charge, and uh, I saw some boxes over there, so I immediately without asking start pulling out the boxes and opening them up uh, what did you find commodores commodore magazines do you uh, have, have a commodore no but um hulk hogan that strangling bart simpson with the blues brothers. with the blues brothers holding him back how awesome is this <laughs> okay yeah the only thing i i found for myself was a couple of um, Commodore magazines. I'm not really into the Commodore. Uh, <laughs> nobody is in Europe, only in UK. But there were a couple of nice covers. Uh, Would you want them all? And then here, Elvira. Elvira, there we go. Scream test. The scream test, yes. I want these two. They're like a year, they're like a year old piece. Uh, yeah. They're a year old piece. Okay. Yeah, say so. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's what he said. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Hey, he's gonna buy them all. Probably. Renny, scoring it. Street home. Fighter. Yeah, Rip off. Yeah. Oh, there's more. Wow, with the with the back cards and everything. Yeah. Look, yellow border. Oh, there's a crank. Uh, uh, a little bit of a hodgepodge. Of yeah, just stuff. Wow, this a is lot great. Of weapons. Wow. Can I go through that? Yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah. Wow. This is like the bee's knees amongst collecting when you bees get to go knees. through. <laughs> I mean, it is. Like if you get to go through like like a baggie of just weapons and accessories, because this is what makes or break, I guess, a sale for you as yeah. well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like yeah. if it has all of the yeah, accessories. Yeah, the accessories. Any shop where you can dig through some boxes of unsorted inventory is a, a, a good shop, you know? Yeah, maybe I can make the Snake Mountain. When I oh have yeah, hey, you have one up there. Yeah. You also have like a ton of like boxed Star Wars vintage stuff there. If yeah, like, that star and like part of the story. Yeah, the but I, I, I don't sell them. Okay. I use them just for... For getting the feel yeah. to the shop. Yeah, you yeah. know, okay. when I started the store, I, I started here 28 years ago and the whole front part was only vintage Star Wars. Okay. It went, so that's 28 years ago. Wow. But it's so hard now to Getting cup up. Inventory? Inventory. Yeah. Okay. It's easy that's to sell. Get. But yeah. <laughs> but a lot of people are looking for still it. Still looking for it. But you see also at the moment lots of people, customers who comes here already for such a long time, they have what they Yeah, they already want. So it's have. like pretty tough to find something in yeah. the vintage realm. Yeah. Because yeah. like I'm going through this and I already have most of it, apart from like the 2000 next stuff. Didn't know we had the stealthy guy. Oh, there's a Hordak. Uh, <laughs> crossbow on here. Let me let me dig some more. Oh, yeah. There's some turtles in here. Here we go. Oh, and skeleton warriors. Get that out. Anything new tic that tickles your fancy, Matty? Yeah. Battle cat. <laughs> Maybe you want this man? I, I hit it in my hand. Uh, <laughs> what is I, I this? don't know. <laughs> it's a pile of hits. <laughs> a pile of hits. A good old pile of hits. A good pile of hits. <laughs> Warhammer. Warhammer. There's a lot of stuff I already have, but here's actually a toy line by Toy Biz that I've been after. Lots of Toy Biz. 
And like the crazy Spider-Man and stuff in there. I'm looking for like the 80s Marvel stuff. Um, so like Secret Wars. But this is a cool figure. It's like this weird insect alien. Ooh, this is some Ghost Rider stuff. In the sky? No, like okay. Ghost Rider. But um, the, like the fun thing about this uh, toy line is that it actually has a lot of glow in the dark things as well. I actually really like the way this looks. So it's a bit, little bit in the sky. A little, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Here we go. Another Ghost Rider. I actually might pick these two up. These look cool, right? Yeah. I like it. Yeah. I like it. Definitely. Well, if they're for sale, I don't know, we're just going through boxes here. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we do. Oh, you know who I'm actually looking for, for for this? It's like Modok. Like, he's from the Iron Man line. Looks like this big floating head. It's like in this little spacesuit. Is it like a giant head? But, uh, when there's an Iron Man in here. Okay. 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 I, I'm, I'm going to ask about these two. Do they glow in the dark? They do? They do glow in the dark. <laughs> awesome. I ended up grabbing Vengeance and Ghost Rider for 15 a piece, and it came with their accessories. So you had this shop at this location for 28 years, yeah. and then you've been selling finish for like no, I show you. 35 years or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I started in 1990 with, I collected robots. Okay. When yeah. I was between my 10th and my 20th, I collect toy robots, okay. you know, like in that yeah. cabinet. Okay. And when I stopped, I had about 500. Okay. I I was 20 years old. I finished school and I want to start my own shop. Yeah. So I start to sell my collection. Ask my parents because they supported me. Mm -hmm. It's okay that I sell my collection. And I started at an antique mall here okay. in Amsterdam. Yeah. And I had a little booth, four square yeah. meters. Yeah. And that was my first shop. Okay. And I've been there for two years through a friend of my father. He had two and a half thousand car Star Wars carded figures. Wow, two and a half thousand. Was, yeah, so I started with the... Uh, like all yak faces? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I had 50. Pretty much. You I had 50? Uh, yeah, I had 180 R2-D2 pop-up lightsabers. Wait, oh. Yeah, but I tra in that time I yeah. traded them. Mm -hmm. You know, in the 90s you had a magazine, it, called, it was called The Toy Shop. It was a newspaper, okay. mm -hmm. and that was, in that time, the toy community because all the big, the, the dealers from England, from mm -hmm. Japan, for, that was how the people connect. Yeah. And then I, I, I so I advertised in that magazine. Okay. And so I traded all around the world and wow. I've been in contact. The owner was like the best thing in the store, I, I thought. It was from an age even before our uh, early uh, ventures into collecting. It's great getting to talk to Jeff about the history of the shop. He basically grew his business from the ground up and he still does this all with a passion. I got excited the moment he, he started opening up um, about his, uh, his early days of collecting. This was Fintas Heaven. Oh wow, okay. My first store, in okay. of my real store, it was in a basement. Star Wars collectors, they had still have memories about this because wow. I was the first store oh, to sell in the store. Yeah. yeah. Wow. This was my uh, store in the, yeah, I had it for four years there. But, you know, with, uh, with the vintage and wow. yeah, I used to t travel also in that time also already to Japan. So I uh, uh, you have like the micro collection. Yeah, down micro there. And here with all the Japanese Star Wars, vintage robots, Star Wars. Uh, this was my favorite. This was well a piece of James Bond. Yeah, yeah. From, place um, friends. Which which movie was? I don't that? know. It's, I think the with spy. The I don't yeah. know with the film, but it's a yeah. very rare. Uh, Playset. Playset. Wow. Uh, I never even heard about that. Oh. This was my storefront. Oh, wow. uh, this was there my big uh, robot display from France. Bombay, Bondi robot. Oh. I'm just trying to imagine like all the toys that have already come through this toy shop and unfortunately all the toys he's already had to let go of. The store is me. What I like through the years. Okay. You know, I like, I grew up with Nintendo. You know, I like Mario. I, I'm yeah. a, still play games you know it's uh, <laughs> i like star wars i like robots i like i do a lot of japanese things because i've been many times in tokyo buying toys oh, yeah. and uh <laughs> yeah that's the where i get inspired but uh yeah that's how i started uh, well in the in the single it was a nice time so this what is that tazo, tazo. tazo. get your pow gone. Got all these Star Wars bugs in, it. Mm -hmm. and they come in like these 
Oh, they're like actual collectors yeah, things. Kind of like it. You want to play Tin Can Challenge or Tin Can Alley? Ooh, you like that? Yes, I like that. Sights like real rifle. You have these awesome big Darth Vader heads on top. Yeah. What what are those about? Yeah. I bought them late 80s, early 90s at a sci-fi convention. They were made by a Belgium artist okay. in that time. Okay. And he made about a hundred. Okay, and you have three. And, and, yeah, <laughs> I, but he spread them around Europe because I bought them in England. Okay. But I don't, I don't remember anymore what's the story behind yeah. them. And that's not the only thing we saw up on the top shelf. You okay. saw it? Yeah. The great Garlu. Hidden away. Like it. You like it? It's a pretty cool piece. Like, I mean, we're so close. Yeah. <laughs> it's a piece what doesn't need uh, to be sell. You know, I. I yeah, it's, it's <laughs> one you, you, you kind of want to keep. Yeah. Natty and, and Ed know everything about it and, and knew, knew it was something special. Of course, I know about this toy, but usually when I see it, it's behind a glass or it's in the back of some guy's boot that's selling at a toy fair and there's like security around it. So now that I'm in this vicinity of it i'm like i'm gonna go for it i've had it once in the 90s and since then not i've been dying to uh see for myself since ever since uh jordan uh brought it up on the toy on toy hunters wow yeah. <laughs> i can hold it yeah, yeah sure i want to get up and close and like really see what this toy is about now that we have the opportunity for it tell oh, your, uh, oh, he's actually quite tell happy. your thoughts about it wow <laughs> I don't know, like the thing that like excites me the most about this is just like the way he looks. Cause I mean look at him. He's awesome. He'll destroy cities and stuff. <laughs> like, are you sure you're supposed to keep him here in Amsterdam? <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we were all three like in awe. I was like, oh this is a, this is an awesome toy. And he showed us how this, how it works. Trip out like you should hold him. It's yeah. crazy how how Yeah. Yeah, wow. So he's got the claw, he's got um, the little that medallion is, thing. Yeah, that one is uh, a lot of times missing, the yeah, medallion. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah. yeah just toy, look man. at the sculpt on that yeah. face. It's insane. They so made also is... a small one, the son of Carlou. Yeah, yeah, indeed. <laughs> the wind up. <laughs> this is like a, a, a crazy, complicated <laughs> thing, it appears. Wow. When did this come out? Like It initially came out in 1961. It was produced by Marx and it was going for about $18 back then. Now they're going for a lot more. But what this actually did, it allowed you as a kid to control a movie monster. Does he still work? Uh, for 70%. Okay. Because there's love. lots of functions I think. Yeah. It's yeah, yeah, like yeah, yeah, a yeah, lot yeah. of batteries yeah, that are yeah. supposed to go in there. You want to see it works? <laughs> when you were a kid in the 60s wow. and you, were, you get it for the holidays yeah. or your birthday. Wow. <laughs> I think it's an expensive, it was an expensive toy. Yeah? I, I think in uh, that time. Yeah, it was definitely a cool toy for being so old. I couldn't believe my eyes, it still moved, it still, it, it just didn't pick up the, the things, I think. Uh, but it still bended over, uh, yeah, it's such a good toy. It is some old. It's supposed to do this, yeah. but I don't know, uh, because it doesn't, doesn't not responding, so that one is not working. But, but I think, like, from a collector point of view, it's like, okay, it works, Yeah. but this is like a display piece. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Some toys have memories. Oh yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, I, yeah. I, I, it's all about memories, dreams, and uh, that's yeah. for me collecting yeah. and meeting people, and it's also my living. Yeah, so, yeah, 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 yeah. Of, yeah. My, <laughs> of me and my family. So one thing I did really catch my eye, and I'm really thinking about, is like the bootleg turtles in there. Just some bootleg. I can take it. Can up. I take it up? Yeah, sure. Dude, Maddie, feast your eyes on this oh wow <laughs> tortugas it's perfect it's from spain it's perfection no mexico Argenti argentina. Uh, argentina. Oh, argentina argentina yeah okay las fantasticas tortugas argentina turtles whoa how much is that yeah it's ask 80. okay I mean, so. I, I, I want to think about that. I've never seen that before. That looks great. I basically love anything that's a TMNT bootleg, and I had never seen this one before. I never heard about it, so it really piqued my interest. Had, like, uh, this is like very wow. extensive, like the way it's yeah. all like stitched together and everything. But look at it! Wow. I think I'm buying this. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> 
And the amazing thing about this one is how much work went into the packaging. Like the little blisters stapled together with extra cardboard. All of it had artwork on it. This is a pretty cool piece. Okay. Yeah, check it out. So, uh, yeah. But I, I'm buying it. <laughs> <laughs> and sure, it was 80 euros, but I don't mind paying up for this thing because it just looks so minty and it consists of so many little parts to the packaging. I was like, yeah, why not? In the end, all the good stuff is always behind the counter in the glass case. You just need to be able to walk your way back there or talk your way back there. Yeah, I came up to this glass case. Kind of want some Chucky dolls as well. So. Chucky dolls? It was behind the counter. It was the, the, the where the good stuff, uh, some of the good stuff was. Uh, and he had like this tiny little uh, gashapon uh, styled. They're from Japan. Okay. Uh, Japanese uh, gashapon figures from. Oh the yeah, they come out of the. Yeah, uh, from the a thing, couple yeah. of years ago. Chucky's. I picked up two of them because I, I really liked them. I didn't have anything Chucky related in my uh, in my collection, so I just thought, yeah, why not? Let's pick it up. It's here. Let's pick it up. I like this yeah. one as well because he has the. <laughs> and he has the good guy hammer. Good guy hammer. Yeah. yeah. And this dude! <laughs> uh, Renzo pulls out uh, a vintage 1992, I think, uh, Donkey Kong Country uh, figure. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> you don't want it. <laughs> yeah, that's a nice grab on that, you know, DK toy. Whoever got it in the end. But I've been on the lookout for those and they're usually pretty expensive, like uh, expensive, 20, 25 dollars for one figure. It's pretty pretty up there I think <laughs> he pulls it out and the guy goes like oh yeah that's 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 nothing that's like like a DK figure I'm like yeah I, <laughs> I want that yoink <laughs> then when we were about to just check out I see something at like the top shelf there's a, yeah. a werewolf on top of those I saw that as well what is it? that guy it's a model it was a Aurora model kit that's an Aurora yeah but it's was painted okay there was an Aurora factory was in Holland. Really? Yeah. Wow, okay. And we had the Aurora factory. In the 80s, uh, I had in the 90s, there was a big stock turned up. Yeah. I, uh, it was people at the, you can, you can win it also in the time at the fairground here in Holland. Oh, wow. He had long boxes, the square boxes, the dinosaurs. Wow. And uh, yeah. Yeah, you have a dozen of them. Oh, oh. it says 20, but 15 is okay. 15? Yeah, 15 is okay. Wow. Dude, check it out. The wolf man. With, but um, I think this was from the little yeah, the, on it. Sweet, this is an actual Aurora model kit and a monster one. I've always found these fascinating. Now for 15 euros, I'm not gonna argue. I want this. Even though if, if it's got some, you know, fingers chipped off, this is so cool. I never see it and uh, I'm going for it. I'm going all in. Look at this thing. Yeah. You get the dust for free. Yeah. <laughs> Chief smoke. Yeah. You guys should call me like that. <laughs> Puffin steam like smoke. Let it see through action. I've never seen this before. It's a giant turtle in the back. What? He's, he's, he's pulling out all the stops now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, this is, I have, I have, I have, wow. These are some leaflets, uh, treasure books. Uh, Whoa. He's a little bit damaged, but uh, so Vince from Keep It Mint in Mind is already like texting, like, Where are you guys? <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, yeah, scooping up the deals. He's, he's swimming or something. What is he doing? <laughs> is this for sale? Wait, well, it, it starts with band. Oh, okay, it's Bandai, and yeah. then it goes into, um, yeah, uh, Saint Seiya. I really love this kind of thing. A catalog just for the Bandai distribution of TMNT in Europe. An art cool piece for my collection. So this is for France, I think? I think it's for sort the of French market. Yeah. Or Spain, because I see... Tortugas as yeah. well. Yeah, yeah. But... Okay. Is this for sale? Uh, uh, yeah, a little up. It's a gift. Really? For your collection. Oh. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. We are much. total collection. Wow, okay. No, this is sweet. <laughs> <laughs> and at a point it just clicked like, okay, I have to, I, I'm not got buy, gonna buy a lot of stuff here, so I have to uh, make um, Ed buy all the stuff. So I started pointing out, okay, here's another magazine. Have you seen that over there? Oh, there's another 
statue, uh, another piece. This is all the stuff I got. This is Maddie's stuff. Renzo picking up some Commodore. Um, so let's see what it totals to. Yeah, the guys were already checking out, but um, I like to shoot a lot of footage. So I was still shooting everything behind me, and, and then I saw the, 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 the magazine, pull it out. Oh, maybe this is something for you. Mikey, out from Pokemon. Yeah. So Renzo starts handing me out these model kid books. Um, one of them is just dedicated to Aurora. 15 for the both of them. I'm happy with that. And in the end, I also throw a Secret Wars Spider-Man on my pile, just because this one still has the paint on his chest in really good condition. Mine was really uh, hunkering for an upgrade, so I'm glad I pulled the trigger on that one. Love that that crazy turtle piece. That's insane. Yeah, they made some strange pieces around the world. Yeah, eh? It's definitely. Yeah. <laughs> So over at Space Oddity I end up spending around 150 euros and most of that is actually for the Argentinian bootleg. So I'm pretty happy about adding a lot of really cool stuff to my collection. So we say goodbye to Jeff. It's a, it's a nice guy, he has a good story to tell, he showed us pictures from uh, when he, his parents were into the business and, and, and selling toys, buying and selling toys. So he really uh, has a as a heart for uh, for his job. So yeah, yeah. If you're in Amsterdam, visit visit Space uh, yeah, You're not gonna be disappointed. It's been great hanging out with him, but we have another toy shop on the list we want to check out over in Harlem. But and then you come in and you're like, oh, there's a there's a retro game shop. Let's go over there and mix up the whole day. Yes. So we have to walk like an hour. Toy shops, it's all good, but now let's hunt for some games. I just typed it in Google, and the first thing that came up was Game Over. Um, so I looked it up, it was like 10 minutes walk. It's nowhere where we are, it's the other side of Amsterdam. And I know Matty and Renzo, they want to get the retro game fix on, so we head over there. Just because you want to get the retro game fix? Yes. And you think the prices are going to be okay? The there? prices will be excellent. <laughs> I, have, I have all the hopes in the world. Um, we will find so much stuff there. And then afterwards you can edit this. Yeah. So what's happening? It's not open yet? Nope. How late is it? How late is it? <laughs> and it's closed. <laughs> it's like like 30 minutes and then it opens. Yeah. This is this is the reason we went out of the way to come here and now we're here too early. Yeah, what do you have to say for yourself? Uh nothing. <laughs> But well, they do have VTech, so I think it's Yay! all gonna be fine. Yeah, it's all okay, so we waste a bit of time over there. We take a little look around in some of the other shops. Finally, it opens up. We head in, and it's actually a pretty big shop. Game over, bro. They have loads of variety, gaming-wise, but also console-wise. There's some oddities in there, definitely. I saw some uh, cool 32X stuff for the Sega. There were some crazy Famicom, weird, you know, Japanese type of uh, computer systems in there as well. It's a cool shop. It's, it's right next to the train station, the big train st station in Amsterdam. So if you have the time, definitely go there. Um, but sometimes you just don't feel it and we knew uh, after this we're gonna go to another store that has possibilities so um, you have to be concerned about your budget. It's a cool store but it's like you know it's uh, the, the one that's in the middle of the center and uh, the price is gonna be uh, out of our price range I think uh, but still a cool store cool things to see yeah. But these guys it's still difficult to find something they want because they already have too much stuff seriously like for Maddie and Renzo, you're gonna need to pull out like a box adventure if you want to get them excited about something. And also I had a little bit of toys over there, but it was mainly newer um, video game related stuff. Game over is done. We walk back to the car and we head over to Harlem because we're gonna go visit the Toy Boys over there. They have a storage unit. I think our mission should be get in there. <laughs> I'm gonna show you more <laughs> later. Okay. Oh, the no, the no face, that move. Digging deep. 
Big deep. Be sure to subscribe for more 80s and 90s toy hunting adventures. Check us out in the next episode. Thanks so much for watching. Definitely let me know in the comments down below what piqued your interest, if you have any questions about anything you saw in the video. And yeah, if you like to do more, you can always support us on Patreon or buy a t-shirt in the Teespring link down below. I hope to see you in the next video. Have an awesome week. And yeah, till next time. Bye. Great garlic. No. Damn it, we should have picked up the great garlic. You yeah. should have picked it up. We have room for it. And yeah. we just do that. Um, Turn around the car. <laughs> great garlic. Here we come. Here we come.